I wanted to give some insight on uh, a thought that I've had um, for a long time. You know, right now we're um, supposed to be aware of mental, men's mental health, right? When I was younger, I was working at a company and I had a friend. I was young, we were young, you know. I didn't I didn't understand a lot of things that I understand now, but one of my friends had uh, been struggling with, you know, mental health. Now I can say that, now that I know how it feels. Um It's how we interpret life, how we internalize it, how um, I always say that everything happens for a reason, and you you're 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 basically connecting the dots in your life. Like if someone could have told you something today, then you saw it on TV, then you saw it on your phone, and then you're like, oh, you know, this that must that's what means that must mean something because. There's no such thing as coincidence. Everything is happening for a reason. Subconsciously, when you're awake and you're seeing it, you're alert. Then in your your subconscious mind, there's other stuff that's being collected that you have no idea. And it's not right or wrong. It's not good or bad. It's just happening. So you can manipulate that to a certain extent um, if you learn how to, right? So I understand that. And there's rules to life. There's rules, man, there's so many rules that we don't even understand, you know, so many laws that we operate within in, in our system and being alive that once you start understanding it, you know, that's why it's right now it's big, like people manifesting and, and doing all these things, right? Um, there's laws, uh, Man, one of the young guys, one of these young rappers, I forgot, uh, X, 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 whatever that kid's name was. He passed away, Extinction or something like that his name was. He was onto it. He knew all the laws, laws of attraction, the laws of, uh, what is it called? There's, I mean, there's a couple of them. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I don't want to venture off into that. But those are things that I would advise people to look into. But when my friend was young, when we were young, he um, he unalived himself in his apartment, and we went to we were with him the night before, and the next night, or I want to say that that evening when we left his house, he did that, and I was so hurt because we found out the next day. I was so hurt, and I was like, "Why didn't we see it? Why didn't we know? You know?" And I've always felt like people that do that are very selfish. I'm like, man, you look at all the people that you're hurting. You're hurting your your spouse, your kids, your this, your that, the people that work with you, your friends, your family, other, like all these. That's what I'm thinking in my head. I've always thought that, you know, because I've never had those thoughts prior to the last, you know, the last uh, four years, three years in my life. That's never never been an option but when your heart breaks because of whether it's because of someone other than yourself or something that you did because we all have consequence man to sin we have consequence to choices we have consequences to our words we have consequences because people have a perception of us already so no matter what we say no matter what we do they have this built in their head that that's who you are and you're not gonna you know, you're not gonna uh change my mind. I know you. You're 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 a master manipulator, you're a narcissist, you're whatever they may think in their mind. And as much as you're trying to like, no, that's not who I am, this is what I was going through, this is you know the reasoning for that. No, those are excuses. And no, you're 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 blah blah blah. And they're essentially attacking you. But if you say that they're attacking you, then you're making an excuse because they're being firm. And they care and they're letting you know what you are and where you're not. And they don't walk your shoes. They don't 
you know, like live your, your day to day life. And I'm not good at doing that. Um, I'm not good at identifying something from someone and then labeling them. I, I don't, I don't know if that's a skill. I don't know if that's, um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, like it's as far as like being able to do that, cause you can use it for good or bad, but I don't, I don't want to even say if that if that skill would be a good or a bad skill to have. I don't know, but I know for me, I really have worked on myself. I've done therapy. I've talked to people, you know, and I could share my story and it's a crazy story, but everybody has a story, right? And sometimes we put things out there because we're hoping that it might reach an individual, that it might help them. But then for one person that you do help, you're going to get scrutinized by a hundred to a thousand other people because they're going to compare what you're saying to what they know. And they only know what they know. And some people, they know stuff, but and, and I, I'm I'm going to agree to say sometimes they may be able to identify things, but sometimes when I talk to someone, I don't want them to identify me as anything. I'm like, I want you to care about me and just care that I'm 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 who I am and this is what I am to you. And, you know, and but they label it as like, oh, so you just want me to, you know, hear you vent or do you want me to tell you sweet things after this or do you want me to give you solutions and it's like, well, I don't want you to treat me like I'm a customer or a client. I want you to treat me like a human and someone that you care about. And if if it's a combination of things, cool. But I don't, I don't need you to, to like analyze me. And then, you know, it, and it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing because then when you start thinking that way, you're gonna be very careful of who you talk to and who you open your mouth to and share your information, who you're vulnerable with, all that, and. uh as I got older, I started to understand that because men, we we don't open up. We we keep everything inside until it boils up, and then it gets to a point to where we're doing drugs, we're alcohol. Um, we try to find, you know, some some we'll find some substance, something that will um, subside the pain. And I never knew that it's not selfish. You just people want a way out. But the only way out is God. Even now, man, like the pain that I feel, I could cover it up with a big smile and I can I can hide it very well. You know, a lot of us hide it very well. And that's the reason I'm putting this video up because this is how mental health looks like right now in this moment. I can smile at you and people can look at me and be, man, he's glistening. You know, he looks good. Everything looks great. And it's not. But this is what men deal with. You know, people can verbally abuse you and, and discard you. And they label you what they want. And they have a, a perception of who you are. And they just stick to it. And... It's like, these are patterns and these are things that you've done. And I know, and they're building up a case in their mind against you. And you're like, you know what? I was real stressed out and I apologize. Nah, I don't need to hear that. Those are excuses. I know this and I know that. And I'm like, wow. And this is coming from a person that you thought cared about you. That you thought that was going to be there for you and you thought that really was invested in you. And then I'm like, damn, am I really that gullible? Am I really that foolish? And then you start second minding yourself and second guessing yourself. And then it's just, that's where the, where the whirlwind starts, you know, and it'll turn into a little whirlwind, into a tornado, into a freaking, you know, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> What's bigger than a tornado? More more than one tornado? But yeah, that's what happens to a lot of us men. And I can just share that. And um, this is what it looks like. And who is your... For us, who's our support system? 
I don't have a father. My father was never there. But that's an excuse. Don't let that be your excuse, Joe. Um, I don't have a a great relationship with my mom. That's another excuse, Joe. Okay. Um, well, I don't have a mentor right now that I feel comfortable with opening up to because my mind is not really in that. I just need a friend to talk to. That sounds like an excuse, Joe. These are all excuses. You need to fix yourself. And I'm like, damn, when you're drowning, that's like telling someone, you don't need a lifeguard. You need to save yourself when you're drowning. And it's like, wow. Well, I don't want to drown. So what's the solution? And that's why mental health is important. Because when someone like me feels like they're drowning, there is no lifeguard on duty. So it's either you drown or you just get it over with. And that's why a lot of people give up. But don't give up. Don't give up. Check on your friends. Make sure you uh, contact some people that you love, that you trust. And have, have three or four people talk to them and let them know that you're going through things. That, that sometimes you're going to give them a cold word. You're going to give them some numbers. Whatever it is. And maybe they'll be uh, available. If not, I know there's a hotline that you can call. and uh, But I know that one's like uh, automated. And then, it, I don't know, it takes some time to get some. Or look within your, your city, um, social service or somebody. There's uh, programs out there. I'm actually going to tap into one and just go do therapy for myself. Um, you know, just... I came off of, um, you know, I was in a seven, eight year relationship and things didn't end well. Well, of course we separated, but, you know, uh, it was a lot of, a lot of stress, a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of things, you know, it was what they call a, a tower moment where everything came crumbling down and then you have to rebuild yourself. And um, there's ways of doing that in a healthy way. There's ways of doing that in an unhealthy way. And um, a lot of people don't bounce back. People tend to tell me like, man, Joe, you're so resilient, bro. How do you do it? I don't have an answer for that. Um, I trust God. That's about it. And my relationship with God may not be the same as yours, you know, and um, it's OK. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love you and that God's not going to take care of you. Um, I'm just in a weird place in my life that I've never been before. And because I came off of that relationship and I was single for about two years and then I said, you know what, man? I want to, I want a person that I can be with God. And I prayed and I did all the things, you know, I followed all the, the books that I was reading, writing stuff down, you know, you have to be the person that you want to attract into your life. I would go on dates by myself and pretend that this person is there with me. And I would pretend that way. I know it sounds crazy, but I was advised to do that. So I said, you know what? At this point, I would do that and I would go out to eat by myself and I would pretend that I was visually I would, you know, say that the person that that loves me the most is sitting across from me. I don't see them right now, but eventually they're going to be sitting there. And uh, so I did that for a while and then I did meet somebody that I thought was like awesome, but they were showing the best part of them. And then I was showing my best part. Um, I don't feel like I'm a bad person, 
But when someone is labeling you and somebody is, is looking for the, the bad part of you, they're going to see it all day. And they're just building up a case as to why you're a bad person. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that, anyone that's watching this video. But that's a very, very... I want to label it traumatic. I do. Because you're just like, yo, like, am I really that bad of a person? Am I really that gullible? Am I really that foolish? Am I really that... Am I... Am I that? Am I in denial of myself? Like, I do I not know myself? Do I not know who I am and what I stand for? Do I not understand my like who I my essence of who I am? I and you start. I'm telling you, and um, man, and so when you come off of a divorce or you come off of a separation like that. And then you experience this, man, it's like having a scar and then you just reopen that scar because you felt like you, any trauma that you experience, man, it takes years of counseling. And I took counseling and I took therapy and I did all that stuff. Um, but now I feel like, but uh, my thing is this, that sometimes words are not going to do any justice to the trauma that I experienced, right? When someone was labeling me this and going through all that, right? It's not because it's, someone needs to hear that. I This is what I believe. Someone needs to hear that and be like, wow, you're dealing with that? You're you, like, so you're letting someone talk to you that way? How, that's not healthy. That's not this, that's not. And so the same way that person is identifying red flags or whatever in me, someone can, someone above that, that knows more, that knows more about indicators, that knows more about psychology, that knows about gaslighting, that, you know, stonewalling and all these, you know, psychological terms. When someone does that to that person, they don't like that. And so they'll be in denial. And what they see is, and that's the thing, this is one thing that I that I can uh, agree with is a lot of times people, what they see in you is a reflection of them. And in this moment, that's exactly how I feel, that that individual that was telling me these things is a reflection of what they see, that they're not seeing me, they're seeing themselves in me. And because of that, they're quick to point those indicators out. And I'm like, wow. And then it's just, you're, you become a a casualty and it sucks and that's what sucks but that's just theory right it's a theory that i have it's it's my perception of the situation i'm seeing it from this point of view someone over there can be seeing it from a different point of view and their story might not even line up with my story and then am i crazy or are they crazy or are we both crazy? Because I was there when it happened. And this is what I saw. This is what I remember. And someone else may see it some, some other way. And it's... <laughs> I'm telling you. That's what causes... And then someone may say that... You're completely wrong. And they're completely right. I don't know. But... As much as old habits want to tell me like, man, Joe, just get out, go do this, go do that, get your mind off of it. All I'm going to do is pray, meditate, breathe, practice some breathing techniques and just come to the conclusion that this happened for a reason. And what did I learn? So that's what those are my uh those are my thoughts for right now on mental health for men and um just you know venting a little bit but hopefully this helps somebody out there cuz mental health is important 
And I think we're all, all influenced by things that we see, things that we hear. And, and I made a comment that I'm not easily influenced. At least that's what I believe. Because I, I don't... The reason I say that is because I don't like going with the grain. I don't like going and doing what everybody does. I like to understand things. I like to learn things. I like to look into things. I, I When people are... Everybody's rocking braids. I ain't trying to rock braids, man. When everyone's rocking tapers, I don't... I like being me and doing my thing by myself. So that's the reason I say that. I don't feel like I'm easily influenced by people because I criticize people for being clones. I don't want to be a clone. I want to be me. So when someone tells me that, I'm like, no, man, that's exactly the opposite. And they're like, no, you are easily influenced by everything and everyone. And I'm like, wow. So then I start, I really do start second guessing myself. But I know in my heart of hearts, man, that they, they don't mean it. I think, uh, like I said, it's a reflection of them. But I hope that anyone that's struggling with mental health, I hope you have someone that you can turn to that you can be vulnerable with. Um, but just be careful and who those people are. Be very careful. I, I, I pray that you find someone that's an, an elder that you can really talk to. And that's led by the Spirit and led by God. Because um, it's tough. It's tough, man. There's a lot of reasons that I can tell you that why you have to always stay alert. But be vigilant, man. Be vigilant. And uh, just hang in there. Like I said, have your people. You know, if you have a code word or number that, hey, man, star 77, dog, I'm having a moment. Can you be available? You know, can you can you be my, you know, my accountability partner or whatever you want to call them i advise y'all to have that man and get and get one of these get one of these man get, get one of these and just turn to the turn to the word turn to the word all right man y'all stay blessed